Welcome to Europe PCR 2024. I'm Ole de Bakker. I'm a structural interventionist from Copenhagen, Denmark, and I have the honor here to uh, have a talk with Danny Dvir from Jerusalem in, uh, in Israel. So, Danny, we're going to talk about the new uh, SAVI uh, wire, which we can use in, the TAVI, in our TAVI procedures. So, this is a new wire, which is designed to be a, a workhorse wire. Um, which gives us the possibility to do pacing, also some hemodynamic monitoring. Hemodynamic monitoring. So we want to go a little bit more into depth uh, in this. Um, my first question to you is, can you share with us how this can help in getting uh, your lean, proce lean procedures, your lean TAVI procedures, to make them even more lean, to make them even more safe, more efficient? How can this contribute to this? And thank you, Ole. And I must say that 2024, there are not many new things in the TAVI field, mm -hmm. but the SAVI wire is one of the things that makes me w most excited with. Not only we can have a stable pacing conditions during our procedures, but also we can know in real time, this is more important even for me, we can know in real time what is happening in the left ventricle mm -hmm. during the procedure, and it is very important in different conditions, different TAVI situations. Mm -hmm. And can it also cut down on the number of manipulations you have to do during the case, or it's exactly the same, you follow the same uh, pathway there? Well, the, we don't have a lot of aortic stenosis after TAVI, right? Mm -hmm. We do have, from time to time, parvalvular leakage that is sometimes more than we like, Sometimes we uh, underestimate the degree of paravalvular leakage. Mm. We want the, our procedures to be streamlined, to be quick, yeah. to be efficient. And uh, we can know in real time what is the AR index. Yeah. And we, by knowing the AR index, we can understand that the result is not good enough. Yeah. And then we do not need, if it's a sheathless procedure, we do not need to bring the sheath back and then bring a pigtail yeah. and then to measure or to do an aortogram while the stiff wire is through. This is a, a very a, a easy method to understand whether the AR result is good enough or not. Yeah. yeah, indeed. So what you say, you can cut out some manipulations. You don't have to exchange, for example, for pigtail. You have actually the, the gear that you use, you have to use for your TAVI procedure anyway. You have on top of that, you have all that extra. You have your continuous hemodynamic monitoring, your more efficient pacing. So a bit to go more in depth on that continuous hemodynamic monitoring option you have there. What is the real benefit of this in maybe different clinical scenarios? So we have different uh, uh, procedure strategies and uh, uh, really a spectrum of procedures that we can do. Mm -hmm. It could be uh, just a simple balloon valvuloplasty that sometimes we still do and not TAVI. It's mm -hmm. rare, but we do that. Oh. It could be TAVI in certain conditions in different scenarios and it mm. could be a complex leaflet modification procedure, basilica procedure, mm. that we, are, we fear that we are causing aortic regurgitation. Mm. I can tell you, Ole, in these different scenarios, I can see the advantage of having real-time mm. LV monitoring, yeah. even balloon expandable valve uh, implantation. Mm -hmm. Imagine that you're not sure whether or not to underfill the, 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 the balloon. Mm -hmm. Right? It, it, this yeah. is not a real scenario. Yeah. But or like with the self-expanding platforms, can you do really like uh, you have 80% expand, expanded valve, you can at that moment you still have your monitoring there from your pressure, what's in that LV there? Yeah. I do and it's quite interesting that in these uh, partial deployments mm -hmm. to understand what's happening in the LV, whether the LVDP is rising up a lot, whether there is a, a lot of aortic regurgitation. Maybe you need to deploy fast in order mm -hmm. to just reduce that AR. Yeah. It yeah. is important to understand what's happening in the left ventricle during the procedure. And yeah. it's not complex. You see it in real time on yeah. the screen. Yeah. So I think since I don't see any disadvantage of using the, that wire, it's as supportive as the wires that we cur currently yeah. use. Yeah. I would use it in the majority of my cases. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Danny, for sharing this experience. And I have to say, we really look forward to get this wire uh, as a workhorse uh, in our cat labs uh, in the coming uh, weeks and months, uh, as I'm sure they will be able to do that. And I think as a summary, I think this is a new wire, which is, gives new options to make our TAVI procedures really lean and uh, make them really safe and efficient. And also this continuous hemodynamic monitoring gets, gets us additional information why, how we m can make our 
outcomes from our cases even better, I would say, and this is important as we move into younger patients and patients with longer life expectancy as well. So thank you, Danny, for uh, this interview.